This presentation includes forward-looking statements that are subject to risks and uncertainties. Actual results may differ materially as a result of various risk factors, including those described in the 10Ks, 10Qs, and 8Ks VMware files with the SEC. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tom Gillis. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Tom Gillis, General Manager for Networking and Security Products here at VMware. And I'm going to talk today about networking and security in the cloud era. Thank you all for coming. So in my travels, I meet lots of senior IT leaders. And I always like to ask the same question, which is, what problem are we solving? What, what, what are you driving towards? And I get a pretty consistent set of answers. What I'm looking for is I need to give my business speed, agility, flexibility, and what does that mean? It means I need to let my developers move quickly and have an infrastructure that can, can move at the speed at which I want my business to move. And I sometimes translate that into, I want the public cloud experience in all of my infrastructure. My private cloud, my hybrid cloud, the public cloud, et cetera. And so that means I want to be able to deploy a workload with a single click. That's very much our vision at VMware, is to deliver the level of automation to enable that one-click kind of public cloud experience on all of your infrastructure. And so I'll ask customers, well, how are we doing? How are we doing on that journey? And I get really interesting answers. Like, generally, I hear like, eh, you know, almost there. So we can deliver, deploy a workload with one click and one ticket. And the ticket means I've got to manually update hardware firewalls. I've got to manually update my load balancers. And we all know what a ticket, how that process works, right? The ticket goes to another group, it lands on someone's desk, that person's on vacation, it goes to someone else, it goes through review, provisioning, et cetera. It can take weeks, sometimes even a month, to deploy a workload, even though you're driving for this you know, instantaneous deployment that, uh, that we all need to power the business. And so I'll make the argument that partial automation is an oxymoron. And partial automation is like a partially built bridge. It's really not that useful, unless, of course, you're fishing, right? But if you're trying to drive a car across it, a partially built bridge is not really a solution. And this is very much our value proposition with NSX, is to provide a complete solution for all of the network functions necessary for a software-defined data center. What are those network functions? Switching, routing, firewalls, so stateful, true layer seven firewall with all the security analytics that go with it. And the last piece of the puzzle, is load balancer and a fully featured load balancer with ADC, WAF, uh, and global load balancing capability. And so with our acquisition of Avi Networks, it really rounds out the NSX solution to provide all of the services you need from layer two to layer seven and all of the major network functions to get to that one click public cloud experience. Right? The ability to deploy a workload and it just works. We don't stop there. So more and more applications are being written using containers for cloud-native applications. And with NSX, we're extending it into Service Mesh, which is a unique technology that's specific to control at layer seven for container-based applications. We integrate that all into a single platform. And we extend that platform, not just from the data center, but all the way out to the edges of the network with our SD-WAN capabilities. And lastly, we, we can wrap this whole virtual solution with advanced analytics and visibility. And this has been a big focus area for development for us over the past year. And so at the uh, talk today, I'm gonna introduce some new products in this space and we're gonna show you some demos of things that we can do with visibility and analytics that are really remarkable on this virtualization platform. And so these problems are not necessarily new or not well understood, they are well understood. But there's many companies that'll be out there and say, I'm gonna try to solve a piece of this problem. And it kind of reminds me of a barbecue. So I bought a new barbecue recently, a couple weeks ago, and I went to Home Depot and, and bought this thing home and I dumped all the parts out. You know what I got? I got this, right? Anyone bought a barbecue and assembled it? It took me like four hours to put this thing together. It was a complete disaster. Kids are hungry, they're waiting for dinner, you know, dad's screwing around with the burners, it doesn't really work right. And what I really wanted was this. I wanted a barbecue. Like why didn't I buy an assembled barbecue? So note to self, buy the assembled barbecue at Home Depot? Um, but this is what I mean by the power of an integrated complete solution. We want infrastructure that powers our software, and we don't want to have to piece it together with lots of different solutions that maybe get to partial automation, which is that oxymoron. So the introduction of Avi really rounds out the complete portfolio of network services that are available in NSX. 
And so to talk a little bit more about that, I'd like to introduce the CEO of Avi, Amit Pandey. Hey, Avi. Thanks Thank for joining you. me. Thank you. I'll give you this. All right. What do you got Thanks. in your hand there? That's stress ball. Stress ball. <laughs> so this is the culprit. This is the heavy weight device that broke the edge of Tom's bridge. No, I mean, this is what's preventing the building of that bridge. And, you know, the amazing thing is that load balancers haven't fundamentally changed since 1999, 2000, yeah. right? Yeah. The rest of the stack has completely changed, but load balancers haven't. And it's um, creating all kinds of issues for our customers who are trying to automate and build out flexible infrastructures. You know, they, they do it all and they come to the last mile and suddenly, boom, stop. Yeah. And, the, uh, and, you know, Frank, I shouldn't say it hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed has become way more expensive and way, way, way bigger, right? So um, let me tell you a story. About three years ago, one of the largest payment processors on the planet ran into an issue during their Thanksgiving shopping season. And it had to do with the load balancer. They'd spent hundreds of millions on a very, very flexible data center. And, uh, but when they hit a connection storm, suddenly the load balancer ran out of capacity. And uh, of course, you know, when the inquisition happened a, a week or so later, uh, the CIO said, well, you know, what's going on? What, why couldn't we use all of that great fungible elastic capacity that we had in our data center and our clouds to spill over and manage the load balancing? And the answer was, well, you know, that fungible capacity was for everything else, not the load balancer. The load balancer was a big hardware, you know, f a farm of hardware devices, and they peaked out. So that's when they contacted us, and we worked with them to build an architecture which looks like this. So it's, it's you know, for people who are familiar with NSX, it should be extremely familiar. It's a separate control plane and a data plane. Uh, the, the little orange devices you see are basically, we call them service engines. They're basically endpoints, they're load balancers. The, the brain in the middle is what controls them all and it enables you to get multi-cloud consistency. So this payment processor had a hybrid environment. They had data centers, they had uh, Google Cloud and other clouds. It enables one-click automation. It enables on-demand elasticity and you, you know, some really amazing analytics. But let me, before I get off the story, let me tell you what the other guys had to say when they were asked to provide a solution. They said, well, buy more load balancers. And you know, people in, at, at the CIO's office kind of fell off their chairs because those load balancers on a day-to-day -day basis were working at you know, five to 7% CPU, right? So they were asked to double their capacity so they could handle you know, a few days of peak traffic. This was completely unpalatable, right? right? right. I, I mean, with us, you don't do that. I mean, we scale on demand, we use the hardware that they had. We used all the, the sort of inexpensive Intel boxes that were in their data center to scale out and provide you know, incredible capacity. We scaled, you know, the last year we, we handled more than 50% of their traffic as they're moving over from their appliances. And we can scale to well over a million TPS, uh, SSL TPS in less than five minutes. Yeah, it's really impressive. I like to say that Avi is the NSX of load balancing. So stateful, scale-out architecture defined entirely in software uh, fits perfectly into this portfolio. Exactly. But we've got more. So the, the analytics are amazing. Load balancers should be really, really good at analytics. The reason, because they sit in the middle of everything, right? The reason they're not is that the architecture is not scalable. So if you try to get beautiful data out of your load balancers today, you'll bring the CPU to its knees. We can give you amazing dashboards. These dashboards are completely multi-tenant. Our IT teams are able to give these to their app teams, their business teams, so you can see what the end-to-end -end performance of your app is, your security posture. And you, know, you can basically create a load balancer per application 
or per app. It, it's fantastic because normally IT is, you know, can sometimes, not, not you guys, but IT can be seen as Dr. No being difficult. But with this kind of analytics, the business teams love them. Yeah, that's the power of software. Yeah. Uh, it's flexible. <clears throat> I see a lot of networking people out there. Networking people are always getting blamed, right? How many people, you know, you're the first call that happens when anything goes down, right? Yeah. yeah. It's um, not a problem. Our customers, when they use Avi, often call it an MTTI tool, a mean time to innocence tool, right? <laughs> because we provide dashboards like this one. So if you look at this, you know, these, these different, you know, this cake is basically response time at different parts of the infrastructure. So in this case, you know, the yellow balloons up at uh, right in the middle, you know, what is that? Well, that's the app response time. Now, normally the IT, the network team gets the phone call. Right? They say, well, something's broken. Your network's down. You know, there's, there's an issue there. The RIT teams can look at this and say, no, no, actually it's not. It's an app issue, and they call up the app team. Or in our case, we can actually scale out the back-end application servers so that the response time goes back to normal. Yeah. And as we go through the conversation today, you'll be hearing a lot more about advanced analytics, measuring application response time. So this just fits perfectly with the strategic direction that we're going at VMware. So we're really happy to have this as part of the portfolio. Yep. So what does this, all this mean? At, at the end of the day, it's all about operational savings. And, you know, we provide tremendous CapEx savings. So this morning, Pat talked about, you know, number, very high numbers, you know, kind of up to 50% or more savings on the CapEx. We do that as well versus the traditional players. But we also provide tremendous operational savings. So everything from capacity planning to load balance or provisioning. In fact, you know, one of our customers has a slogan around Avi, it's, they say it's 23 to 23. It's one of the largest banks on the planet. Basically, it's Tom's, you know, ticket idea. They used to take 23 days to provision the application because everything else was wonderful, it was automated. But that last ticket meant provisioning the load balancer and that could take up to 23 days for them to do. So the 23 to 23 is 23 days down to 23 seconds. Okay. So that's the kind of benefit that you can bring to your app teams and business teams. And, you know, frankly, it's, it's way more than operational savings. I mean, I, I, our champions in these organizations have seen their careers blossom. I mean, they've literally become people who are, you know... Transformative. Yeah, they're yeah. transformative. They're yeah. desired by the app teams yeah. and, and business teams. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, it's a fantastic place to be. So, you know, I would urge you guys, a, a quick plug here, Tom, please go to our booth, speak to our guys, you know, do a hands-on demo for yourself. You can play around with this stuff. It's extremely intuitive. Yeah. And uh, even if you've never used a load balancer before. Yeah. I mean, thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you. Do you want that the guy. ball? No, the ball's yours. Yeah, yeah, throw it away. Um, so, you know, th when we look at the business and the, the adoption of this new technology, there's some statistics that are coming out that I think really give an indicator that something has to be going right. So if you remember, for those of you that were here last year listening to us, we announced 7,500 customers. Today we're pleased to announce we have more than 13,000 customers. Think about that. Like we are adding new customers and growing at a, at a rate that is astounding. And the reason is this idea of creating the public cloud experience in all of my infrastructure is really, really appealing. <clears throat> We've taken down 88% of the Fortune 100. So the largest, most sophisticated customers in the world are choosing VMware and NSX as their platform for network virtualization. And it's giving them that automation and efficiency that they need. It's giving them the scale-out ability that Amit talked about in, in load balancing, but across the entire data center. And one of the more interesting areas for us has been in telco. So with the onset of 5G, 5G technology requires lots more physical points of presence around the, the, the network. And it just becomes unwieldy to think about putting dedicated black box hardware systems in thousands of locations around the world. And so these, these telco providers need to think about, let's virtualize. And who is the partner of choice for that? VMware. And so eight of the 10 largest telcos in the world have chosen VMware for network virtualization. And it's very much the same philosophy and architecture that we're doing for the enterprise that works in the telco space too. Um, you know, one of the things that has been a surprise to, I think, many in the industry, and I'll be honest, even to myself, is the success we've achieved in SD-WAN. 
There was one vendor that had an iron grip on branch office routing, and we've been able to break that grip. And so by many metrics, we are the number one vendor in SD-WAN. So looking at industry analyst metrics, market share, but most importantly, the metric that I use is how do customers feel about it? And I've been doing networking and security for a long, long time. It is rare when you have a networking product that changes the end user experience so profoundly that they can feel it and see it and touch it and kind of rave about it. I've talked to so many customers who have said, you know, I was trying to use a streaming application, a voice application, or like a Zoom or WebEx collaboration tool, Google Hangouts, and it just, it's not smooth, it doesn't work. And then I put this little magic Velo box in and poof, all of a sudden streaming just works. No, I, you know, like what happened? How did it make this better? And that's really, really what's driving the adoption of SD-WAN. And so it's, it's a fantastic product. If you haven't seen it, um, I do encourage you to go look. We have hands-on labs where you can actually see demos and you can see the system in action, see how the quality of service metrics work and how easy it is to deploy. And then as Meet was talking about, in the consumer space, if you've ever purchased something online, if you've ever bought a movie ticket or you bought a concert ticket or watched an online TV show, which I think all of us have, four of the largest consumer applications in the world are using Avi software on the front end because it's so scalable and so efficient. If it's good enough for these folks, we're bringing it to the enterprise and you can achieve those same level of efficiencies in your infrastructure. So this is definitely time to think about you know, how, was our, our, how are we architecting our data center and how we deliver these solutions. And the reason for rethinking this is fundamentally about dollars and cents. So we have a tool that we call DICE that allows us to measure a customer's infrastructure and look for utilization of their capacity. And we've run this across thousands of enterprise customers, more than 2,000 customers. And what we find is that, on average, there's a 59% reduction in CapEx. So it is not at all unreasonable to think that you can take your data center and achieve a compression of two or three to one by doing network virtualization, removing those legacy hardware devices. And the CapEx is a very real, very tangible measurement. It's just math, right? You can do that math yourself. OpEx, when you see the demos that I'm gonna show, the level of automation that we're able to deliver, the OpEx is a little softer measurement, but it's actually more powerful because generally the OpEx is two, three, four times higher than the, than the CapEx component. So take these two together. We see many customers find that they can get an ROI on their virtualization investment in, inside of a year. And so in an, in, an, in an era where we're trying to squeeze 5% out of our budget and look for incremental efficiencies, having the ability to, to do a dramatic increase in your capacity utilization and create huge efficiencies with automation is probably one of the leading areas where you can go and achieve those, those efficiencies that you're looking for. So nowhere is this more evident than in the container space. So containers are still new, it's early in the early days, and customers are still adopting the various piece parts or components that go into it. And as a result, we see solutions that are popping up that are maybe cluster level networking solutions that plug into to containers. But if your container is something that needs to, say for example, talk to a customer database and needs to talk to a VM, all of a sudden this gets kind of complicated. Or if the container needs to reach from public cloud environment back to access a CRM system that's running on-prem, these things get complicated. With NSX, we give you a single platform that runs from layer two to layer seven that treats VMs and containers the same. To us, a, a container is just a little VM. Uh, it's simple, it's scalable, and it works across your entire infrastructure. And so you probably heard today, Pat made announcements around the VMware Tanzu portfolio. I think, in my personal opinion, one of the biggest moves this company has made is with vSphere 7, we're making containers and VMs fully, fully integrated. And so Kubernetes environment and vSphere environment are gonna just look and feel like one. And NSX is the glue that ties this stuff together. It provides the continuity, the policy enforcement for VMs and containers across private cloud, public cloud, and hybrid clouds in a really unique and fully integrated fashion. But we don't just do the east-west traffic. We also focus on tying together the increasingly heterogeneous computing infrastructure in your entire uh, uh, compute environment. And so with our SD-WAN technology, we can take traffic from the branch, and we dynamically route it either to the SaaS application that is being used or to public cloud infrastructure or private cloud based on the nature of the application. This just happens automatically, right? And it's almost like common sense, like why haul that stuff back to some central point and then elbow it back out to the internet? Let it go directly where it's going. SD-WAN provides a unique way of doing that. We also have the ability to provide tightly integrated cloud to cloud connectivity, so VPN connections that can run from an Amazon VPC to say a virtual network at Azure, tie that together in a seamless fashion. 
And lastly, more traditional VPN connections are built into NSX, so I could do private cloud to public cloud, uh, high velocity connections for you know, uh, backup and uh, recovery, et cetera. So all of these are just features on, on, on the platform. But I think one of the most interesting features is the power of visibility. So the neat thing about network virtualization is that we touch every packet. So we're already seeing all of this data that goes through. And you know, we all firmly believe that our ability to, to provide unique insight and operational tools because of this platform is really unprecedented. And so at the show today, we're happy to be announcing two major advancements. One is the product that we call vRealize Network Insight, or affectionately known as Verney. We've extended that to move from just the data center to really provide a broad view of your infrastructure. So Verney can look at flows in your data center all the way out to the edge. It looks at physical and virtual. So it's your, your tool for doing breath. It's, it's perfect for discovery. It can measure application response time without an agent. And we're actually going to show you a demo of that today. And then we've introduced a new platform that we call NSX Intelligence. And, and whereas Verney is, is, is broad, NSX Intelligence is narrow but deep. It goes right down to the packet level. It's focused on the data center. It's focused on the virtual environment. But it provides a level of insight and, co and distributed computation, which is really unique. And so this is one of the things that we inherit from the NSX architecture, is the ability to push computing out to the capillaries of the network. And I think one of the big challenges when you look at network analytics is that the traditional approach to network analytics is you make copies of all the packets. And so you make kind of two of everything. So familiar with tapping? So you set up these big elaborate tapping networks and you tie it into a data lake. And a lot of times those data lakes get really, really big and really, really heavy. So we have a competitor that has a, 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 a product called Tetration that involves a, like a, a minimum of half rack and oftentimes more than a full rack of very high end hardware that's pulling all this data together and doing the computation. With NSX intelligence, instead of moving the packets to the analytics, we move the analytics to the packets. So we push this out in a distributed architecture. And we take advantage of the thousands of general purpose CPUs that are running the application to do the processing and then deliver this as an integrated solution so it just works. You don't need racks and racks of dedicated hardware. So there's three modules that we will be introducing on NSX intelligence. The first is shipping now. It's our policy formulation and security enforcement, and we're going to show demos of that. And then in the near future, we'll be introducing an advanced security analytics module that's going to be looking at things like stolen credential attacks, understanding the context of the network, and network analytics that's going to be more focused around availability, uptime, troubleshooting, et cetera. These will be three different modules all leveraging the same distributed platform. And here's kind of a cool way of seeing how this works in action. This graphic was based on the experience that I've had going to visit customer data centers, and I'm sure this will be very familiar to you. What was interesting to me is if you look at a, at a you know, multi-rack data center, maybe two-thirds of the racks are servers, and they're just racked up server, 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 just like put in place this big grid of compute. But almost a third of the data center is this chunk of other stuff, right? And what is that other stuff? Well, it's hardware load balancers, it's hardware firewalls, security boxes, advanced networking devices, and then all that analytics. And so the traditional approach has been, because we have to have these hardware devices to do this advanced processing, we have to hairpin traffic out of the server farm into these devices and back. It's cumbersome, it's inefficient, and it's rigid. So this is the idea behind NSX is, huh, what if we could define those services in software? And instead of running them in a big lump of proprietary hardware, we could push it out into the general purpose compute. Wouldn't that be interesting? And this is what we do with Avi, right? We put the load balancing where the load is, as opposed to where these big hardware ASICs are. Same thing with firewalls. For east-west traffic, pulling traffic into a dedicated hardware device is very expensive. Why not push it out to where the workload is? And we push it out in a very intelligent way. We only run the rules, the firewall rules necessary for the workload that we're sitting under. So it can be very, very computationally efficient. With NSX intelligence, we're taking on that big rack of hardware that we call analytics, and again, pushing it out to the capillaries of the network. Look at the space that this opens up in the data center. Think about the power, the cooling, the time, the flexibility that you get with a software-defined architecture. So my pledge to you is that I'm going to keep working my way up that rack and replace the security analytics boxes, the networking devices. The more we look at it, we think, gosh, there's an amazing opportunity to replace these dedicated proprietary hardware systems. And the reason we can do this is because we hit an interesting inflection point. So this graph shows general purpose processors over time. 
And it was about, you know, arguably two or three years ago, maybe more, maybe four years ago, that a general purpose Intel processor using technology called DPDK could allow us to run a lot at line rate without burning the entire CPU. And so four or five years ago, you, you needed dedicated hardware because the CPU couldn't keep up with the, with the speed of traffic if you're gonna do network analytics, security detection, et cetera. But when you look at where we are today and where we're going forward, general purpose processors with distributed software are far more powerful than the traditional hardware-based approach. And this is why it's time to rethink how we do these network functions, embrace a software architecture that can create speed, efficiency, and advanced functionality. And so, you know at VMware, we're a very green company. We want to encourage you to go rethink how you build your data center. Rethink, remove, and recycle. Because those hardware load balancers are expensive, and I think they're slightly toxic. So please dispose of them responsibly. Uh, it's kind of a joke. I don't know if they're toxic or not. But, uh, but anyway, we do have some load balancer recycling bins that we're putting outside. Uh, so if you want to dispose of them, we'll take good care of them for you. OK, so let's talk about what's new. Uh, here's the news. We announced today uh, the momentum we've had with our SD-WAN product. More than 150,000 branches deployed. That is a large number. And we're growing at an, at an enormous rate. We've been doubling year over year. So just a tremendous market adoption of our SD-WAN capability. Um, we introduced NSXT 2.5. 2.5 gives us new performance capability, uh, FIPS compliance, and a few other compliance certifications. And we continue to focus on simplifying operations, higher level APIs, better dashboards, more automation. Why? Because I want to get this stuff so that it just works, that the computers do the work, and that you don't have to do the work. That's really our goal. We introduced NSX Intelligence, that distributed analytics platform. This is also available now with the policy formulation and enforcement capability that uh, Jacob is going to come up and demo with me. And we introduced App Defense Insight. App Defense Insight is our advanced security capability that we've built into vSphere. And it's added new capability where we can do um, uh, ident identify and detect anomalies and uh, uh, deficiencies before you deploy the workload. So as we think about this merger of software and hardware, you know, the philosophy is distributed software with general purpose computing. And there's no better partner on the planet for doing general purpose computing than Dell. And so I'd like to invite Tom Burns, my colleague from Dell, to come on up here and we'll talk about what we're doing together. Tom? Thank you. to uh, be here today with Tom and, and the team. It's been an outstanding collaboration between the two companies. And uh, I think one of the reasons why it's been an outstanding collaboration is because Tom and I share the same vision around networking. Yes. From the core to the edge to the cloud, traditional networking is just not going to work for our customers and for our partners on a global basis. You know, more and more is moving out from the traditional data center, I think around 50% of the workloads and applications towards the edge. And about 90% of the data being collected based upon these applications and plus the 5G transformation is also occurring at the edge. So the traditional WAN just isn't going to work. Yeah. We've been innovating in networking. Yes. You, know, you with NSX, micro segmentation, virtualization, Dell EMC around open networking, the first vendor to actually support this aggregation of hardware and software. But we haven't stopped there. We announced our SD-WAN solution at DT World, which is really kind of the signing of the OEM agreement between VMware and Dell EMC to support the Velo Cloud solutions for our customers and partners on a global basis. The first of today's two announcements is I'm happy to announce the shipping of that product on a global basis. Tom, we know what a global basis for Dell means, don't you? Yes, it does. So when you think about SD-WAN and branch offices, you can't be in half the locations. You've got to be in all the locations. And there's no better partner than Dell, right? More than 130 countries around the world were deployed. That's right. We, yeah. we happen to make a little hardware. Yeah. And we can support a lot of customers in a lot of places. So yeah. we're announcing the worldwide support for the Dell EMC SD-WAN solutions. This is really bringing together the best of VMware software with the best of Dell EMC hardware and creating an appliance-like experience for our customers. But Tom, you talked a little bit about the ease of that appliance and the capability to Ignite. So through the Dell EMC orchestrator, the software will become preloaded to the hardware. It arrives at the customer's site. The customer simply connects to the orchestrator, receives the policies, and the customer is up and running with its new SD-WAN solution. One click. One click, That's right. very easy. And then receives full kind of life cycle management from Dell EMC, again, powered by VMware software. And lastly, we want to choose the right path. So this dynamic 
you know, path optimization of really not using just the enterprise's capabilities around connectivity, but over thousands of gateways that VMware has deployed in the cloud on a worldwide basis, picking the best path for that voice, that data, that WebEx experience that you talked about. Yes, outstanding solutions. And I think the power of Dell EMC being able to support this now or worldwide, we'll see even more expansion of that number one position in SD-WAN. I think the last time VMware and Dell EMC put software on x86 kind of commodity hardware, yeah. it was something called VxRail. Did we do okay with VxRail? Yeah. I think we did, yeah. We I found some customers. One. We found some customers. Yeah. So that's the first, and this actually, I said, came out at DT World, but now we're shipping on a global basis. The second, which you are the first to hear, and actually the press release doesn't come out, moves from edge into the core. And that's around modernizing the core with the power switch smart fabric director coming from Dell EMC, but co-developed between VMware and Dell EMC. This provides a solution which tightly integrates the underlay with the overlay. Tom, you talked about all that wonderful analytics that NSX can provide, but it still needs to connect to a fabric. The electrons need to move. The right. electrons need to move, and we've got a lot of great work that's gone on between the two companies really simplifying that. Let's just say, in a traditional networking environment, Tom, how long do you think it would take to say, let's say four to six leaf switches with two spine switches? How long would it take? Well, I'm pretty good in the CLI, so yeah. that, might, that might take me two days. Probably about yeah. two days. Yeah, it's about 120 lines of CLI per switch. Yep. So it'd take you a little bit of time. Yeah. Now with the outstanding contributions of Dell EMC and VMware and the Smart Fabric Director, how much time do you think it connects now uh, this fabric, same fabric? Yeah all the way up into NSXT with full visibility into vCenter. One click? One click, yeah. less than two minutes. Yeah. Outstanding solution brought by the two companies, but we're not standing still. That area of analyzing and understanding what the network is doing, the telemetry that's gonna come from it is gonna allow us a long path of roadmap for the smart fabric director between the collaboration of the two companies. Really eliminating the complexity of proprietary networking and making it easier for customers to automate, transform, and manage the network as they describe and the connectivity that they need. And in honor of Dell EMC Open Networking, the future also holds that this particular fabric director will be agnostic to the NOS. It will support not just OS X, but other third-party softwares, including Sonic, the Microsoft Azure software that's been contributed to OCP, and which Dell EMC is a major contributor to. So we look forward to not just the solutions around SD-WAN, supporting the edge, but also in the core around the smart fabric director, but also the future, continuing to drive disruption and innovation between Dell EMC and VMware. Thanks Tom, a lot, Tom. Tom I really thanks appreciate for joining. it. Yeah. Good stuff, thank you. So you can hear us talk about this capability, but I think it's always more powerful to hear it in the voice of the customer. And one of the more interesting customers that I encountered in my travels was Pirelli. So I do a lot of bicycle racing, and I only ride on Pirelli tires. And I really, really, really care about those tires. Uh, and so it was interesting for me to meet the folks from Pirelli. For those that aren't familiar with Pirelli, they are a tire manufacturer, but they sell more than just tires. They sell, in my view, they sell excitement. And so let me roll a video. We'll show a little bit about the, what Pirelli does. So we're pleased to have Giuseppe Fiorentini. Giuseppe, would you please come up from Pirelli? Giuseppe, thank you for joining. Thank you. Um, so Giuseppe, could you talk a little bit about how you've been partnering with VMware 
to achieve your business goals at Pirelli. Okay, uh, VMR is a historical partner for Pirelli. We started 10 years ago with the first uh, virtualization project. Uh, we move uh, from physical uh, to virtual all server in our main data center. After that, we extend uh, the VMware solution to all branch, uh, remote branch uh, worldwide. And at the end, we extend the solution also on, on all plans. With the VMware and professional services, uh, is supporting Pirelli on a digital transformation project by supplying uh, this sun operating model uh, for the business uh, critical ap application, uh, design, uh, network function virtualization, micro segmentation, uh, and uh, service insertion, and fi uh, finally, uh, design also the, the, the new SD1 technology for the next van that Pirelli are, uh, are demanding. You, you have branches all over the world. You have factories, you have sales offices, you have the yeah. racetracks. How has VMware's SD-WAN transformed your business goals? Okay, with, uh, with SD-WAN, we, uh, uh, we have increased uh, the flexibility. Currently, we are, uh, we are telco agnostic. Uh, on the remote branch, we can uh, combine several, uh, several one access technology and PLS, broadband and, uh, and mobile. We increase uh, the agility. We have uh, decreased the time to deliver for the new office. Uh, when, and we also increase the efficiency because with zero touch provisioning yes. uh, and the templatization, we have reduced remember, the- Remember the one click I talked about? Pushing the boxes out with one click, right? Yeah. We have also reduced the MPLS cost yeah. because uh, the footprint of MPLS uh, is decreased. Yeah. We have also, um, also enabled the local breakout on each remote country. Yes. This, is, this is very important. This means that uh, the, we have improved also the user experience because the distance between the user and the clouds is very decreased. So you've had a very successful deployment of the SD-WAN technology out to the branches. Can you tell us how you're using VMware NSX uh, in your data center and cloud? Uh, okay, um, we have a finish, we have finish a pilot uh, with the NSXT, with the last release, with the services session. The result was very good, and now we have a solution that can replace uh, the network, uh, the network data center that we have in the plant that are legacy and hardware based. So we want to replace this with a full virtual stack based on software solution. Software replacing hardware, recurring yeah. theme here. So tell us a little bit about your experience with the SD-WAN solution. With SD-WAN? Yes. Okay, the, the SD-WAN uh, deployment is going very well. We have, um, we have uh, deployed 26 sites uh, on total of 52. Our deployment uh, is, uh, is very soft. Uh, one site for a uh, week uh, in order to better control uh, pre and post go live and region by region because we have to renegotiate the van contract uh, at the regional level. Currently, we have, uh, move, uh, we have uh, delivered all uh, European and Asia-Pacific country, mm -hmm. region, and at the end of this uh, year, we, we deploy South America and Central America, and next year, North America. Yeah. Global coverage with SD-WAN. Giuseppe, you traveled far to come and join us. I thank you very much for thank that, you. and thank you for your support. <clears throat> So if you've heard me talk before, you might remember I spent years in the United States Air Force, and it always was interesting to me, an Air Force base was this complete collection of resources where everything was necessary to carry out the mission was all located right there. But the problem you have with an Air Force base is really hard to move, right? They're like wired onto the ground. And so, you know, roughly 100 years ago, someone came up with the idea about, huh, what if we could lift this thing up, this complete solution, put it on a ship, and then we could take it, we could put it anywhere we want. That's the modern aircraft carrier. And so when I think about NSX, there's a similar metaphor there. With NSX, we have extended NSX from beyond just an ESX environment to work in every environment. So NSX will run in a bare metal environment. It'll run obviously in ESX. It runs in OpenStack KVM. It'll run in public cloud environments. 
And it acts as a platform that can stitch together this increasingly heterogeneous computing infrastructure that makes up our data center. And so this is what we call the virtual cloud network. And what we've been focusing on over the past year is adding the visibility and analytics on top of this. And so Verney, as I said, provides the breadth, NSX Intelligence provides the deep analytics. And so now I'm gonna show you a demonstration of the virtual cloud network in action. So Jacob, I'm gonna ask Jacob Rapp to come up and join me uh, and walk you through how we can actually realize the vision behind the virtual cloud network. Thanks, Thanks. Jacob, for having me. Great, so uh, you talked earlier uh, about this kind of one-click experience or, or automating uh, all of these functions. But what I've heard is automation can be really hard. You almost need um, a really an army of smart people with a bunch of stickers all over their laptops in order to really <laughs> yeah. figure out how to do this. The right. guy with the penguin tattoo, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So to get started with automation, you have a bunch of API calls. Right. right? And each of those API calls actually then just map to one of those clicks you have to do in the user interface. But it gets a little harder from there. Like each API call actually has a UUID that maps to it, and you gotta kinda understand that UUID and plug into the next API call, and you almost need another sticker on your laptop to understand that thing. So once you get um, basically 10, 15, 20 different API calls done, you got a network. But if any one of those calls breaks in the middle, then the whole thing's messed up. Yeah. So with, with NSX, what we did is we traded all those API calls in for one API call and one file. We call it a declarative API. So basically that one file contains all your intent. Yeah. And once you define your intent in kind of a simple human readable language, you can then send that intent to NSX and they'll translate into desired state. So let's switch over to the demo and see. Infrastructure what. as code. Right? Yeah, infrastructure as code, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So um, here in the demo, um, we have two VMs that need to communicate. So the first step, we need a, a gateway. All right, so let's spin up our gateway. We can click and, click and add our gateway. This is basically tier one, right? We're using JSON here. This is our my, uh, markup language we're using for the demo. So let's click and add our gateway. Next up, now that we have our gateway, we need segments for the VMs to communicate with each other. Simple, okay, tier one catalog uh, database, and uh, we have our, our application as well, segments. We add those to our, connect to our gateway. Yep. And from there, um, policy is much more than just networking, right? We also have security that we need to deal with. We need to lock down those communication flows. We need to micro-segment them with our distributed firewall. So here we just say our source group app, destination group database, uh, service MySQL. This is our layer seven engine. We can actually identify the service that those, those two VMs are communicating. So, so NSX understands, hey, this is a database. It should only be talking SQL. Don't allow things that are not SQL. Yeah, absolutely. Boom, one line of code. Done, yeah, let's, let's throw that into our JSON file as well. Yes. So let's click and, and move into our JSON file. And from there, actually, let's go switch over to our command prompt. And this, this is our command to actually go push this file, but it's, it almost looks like you need maybe a sticker to understand this, but in actuality, all we're doing is just patching our infrastructure with this JSON file. So let's go ahead and, and hit enter and uh, run this command. So here we're actually sending it directly to the NSX server, and they're translating it into the desired state uh, within our and you're, you're showing in the demo fingers on a keyboard, but the idea here is that this would be built into your CI CD pipeline yeah. and it just works. Yeah, absolutely. You would go from that one click down to basically zero clicks. Zero clicks. Yeah. yeah. So even better than one click. Congratulations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's actually hop over to the UI now and see what actually this looks like in NSX. So this is actually our new um, simplified user interface, really one dashboard for all of networking and security. So let's actually click over into our networking tab. Here we can see all of our networking constructs, and let's dive into that tier one gateway that we just created. Here we see our tier one catalog, hop over to segments, and we can see our two segments that we created. And again, you don't really need to even understand that much about networking to understand segments and gateways and this communication pattern. We're trying to bring that cloud-like experience into, into our on-prem environment. Yep. So let's hop over to security. From here, we can look at our distributed firewall, and we can easily view our app policy and our database policy to lock down that app. So it's really pretty simple and straightforward and uh, getting down from, I guess, that many clicks and weeks down to nothing, zero. Yeah. Awesome. So let's, let's switch over to our another, uh, the next scenario. So here we have our app deployed, but no one's infrastructure actually looks like this, right? Not, there's not one single app, nor there's a bunch of new apps that you've already automated. Yeah, that's the trick. How do we deal with today and legacy infrastructure, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's go switch over to NSX intelligence. Ooh. So, yeah, here, dark mode, right? Dark We're mode. looking, previewing our, our dark mode. This yes. is a, I have a Mac laptop. I love the dark mode. And honestly, this demo looks really cool in dark mode. Um, so in the same, like <laughs> in the, in the same user interface, uh, we can click over to plan and troubleshoot to see a preview of what's possible uh, with NSX intelligence. So this, this chart may seem pretty crazy 
to begin with on first, on first view, but this really shows the power of the distributed analytic and data platform that we've built. It's always on and it's everywhere. And honestly, our, most apps aren't like this nice, pretty web app database application that you see in demos. This is what apps look well, like. Well, this is what we want. Right? We want our applications to be interconnected, to be smart, to understand the customer, right? You want this level of integration. Yeah. It can create a lot of complicated infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's actually drill in on a particular application. So if we click on all, we can sort by uh, uh, this tire shop we opened, Tom's Tires. We just had Pirelli up on stage. So uh, we love Pirelli, so we want to start selling some Pirelli tires. So let's hop over to our tire shop. So from here, we can actually see all of the infrastructure, right? From the public cloud front end, in through a middle tier of containers, and all the way to the VMs, and they're running in databases and some shared services in, in bare metal. But from here, I can actually hover, let's hover over one of those links. So this is a, a link of unprotected traffic. So we're gonna wanna deal with this later because this is hitting our, basically our default any, any role at the very end. Right. And we wanna make sure that we're, we're, we're segmenting. Right. These are like unlocked cars. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, move over mm -hmm. onto our protected flows as well. So if we look at our protected flows, this is actually great for audit and compliance, right? We look back in time and make sure the policies that we put in place were actually effective. But from here, we can drill in even further. You talked about um, deep visibility. So what does that mean? Let's click off of this and go into one of our catalog, the catalog database communication. So if we click off of that and then let's just click in, there we go. Cool, so we clicked into our catalog database information. This is like the zoomed in view of yeah. some of the tiers communicating with each other. So right. some of the Single pane of glass from all the way out of the data center down to the individual VMs and containers that are running, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's click in on, and drill in on one of those uh, VMs. So from here, I don't just see all of, like the plain network traffic you would normally see, I actually see all the services too, like RESP is the Redis protocol and DNS and NTP, this is due to our, our layer seven engine. Yeah. But spoiler alert, this is interesting, right? So it's a bunch of data on a slide, but what you can see here is the context yes. that we have with our virtualization platform, where we can look at the flows, we can look at the processes, we can look at the users, and we understand all of that context. We can do some amazing things in security. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, we see the user processes, user, the user that spawned the process, um, all the way to the destination process. Really great visibility. So let's, let's exit out of the screen. <clears throat> so this may seem like a lot of information to take in, um, it's great for visibility, but how is this going to make my policy definition any easier? Right. So with this, we've actually created a very simple recommendation wizard. So let's go ahead and click on our little magic wand icon up there. And from here, we can actually uh, run a uh, recommendation, but we can look at, well, today we're looking at the traffic today, maybe there's new traffic today I want to look at, but I can go back in time as much as 30 days. So let's go ahead and start our discovery. From here, well, just in a matter of seconds, we have a recommendation ready. So let's, let's view our recommendation. And here we can see all of the flows actually nicely grouped into sources and destinations along with those services we talked about, like gRPC, RESP, uh, MongoDB, and all our shared services. So it's a firewall where the computer does the work to write the rules. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So let's, let's go ahead and click proceed here. If we're happy with this, um, now we can figure out where, what rule order we want to put in the firewall. And let's go ahead and proceed from this screen. And here where it's kind of, kind of scary, right? You've you got this great machine learning and you're grouping um, everything together. And if anything, even, even before this, if, as soon as you publish the firewall rule, you're just kind of sitting there waiting for the phone call that you broke the application. Yeah. Every firewall administrator understands this, right? That, that your hesitating finger before you hit commit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so with, we have a great solution to that, which is? Which is we have a simulation. So let's click and toggle on our simulation. Since we're always on, we're looking at data all the time, we can actually go back in time and see what uh, what this policy would have affected the traffic back in time. So you can be really sure that when you hit publish, you're not going to break something. Break something, yes. So let's hit publish. Great, our app's all green, it's completely micro-segmented, and it's still up and running. So simulation, and we also have, with the new version of NSX, the ability to roll back these commands, right? Yeah, NSX T2.5, lots of great operational. Yes. Yep. Okay, cool, so let's move on to our next, our next step. So we got our application up and running, it's all secured and micro-segmented. We got a bunch of users sitting off a branch over SD-WAN, populating our catalog, changing inventory. They're getting the system up and running to go live. How do we deal with their experience? How do we measure their user experience and how would we actually go troubleshoot that? Mm -hmm. So to do that, let's bring in uh, vRealize Network Insight, or, or Verney, like when you mentioned. Um, let's hop over to the UI. So within this user interface, for the first time now, we have SD-WAN by VeloCloud integrated directly within vRealize Network Insight. Data center to the edge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
So with this, we see a kind of our full map view of where all our edges are and our, our main data centers. But we can quickly now drill it directly into where maybe an application needs some attention. So let's go ahead and click on that one application that might need some attention. And from here, we see the same grouping constructs we saw in SX Intelligence, but now we can hover over this red flow and see the actual flow degradation analysis of that flow. So let's, let's dive in deeper. So now this is actually really cool. We can see not only the data center, but we see that flow traversing from the data center through our VeloCloud edges and all the way out to the client. That's very cool. And let's, let's click through. We can see some of our network infrastructure on the bottom, as well as our VeloCloud yeah. uh, gateways, our, WAN. our edges, yeah. I mean, and uh, the VeloCloud hub, and over to our, gate, our uh, uh, edge within, within the branch. But to have that complete visibility, we don't stop there, right? We need that physical underlay. Yeah. Um, visibility, so we can actually the see data center to branch, physical and virtual. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. So here on the right, we see our our VM underlay, and we see that there's this may be Cisco, Juniper, Dell. We just talked about, um, and there seems to be a problem. So let's let's click in on one of those those problem areas. So as we see, we can actually quickly drill into that even the physical fabric and see that there's some packet loss taking place. We don't stop there, just at the packet loss. We go even granular and deeper in the visibility. So if we click down below, we can see some of that packet loss was due to a buffer util overutilization. So we really quickly went from uh, data center to client user experience and drilled all the way down into a physical buffer utilization on a physical switch, all with a very simple few clicks. Great, so our application's healthy. Let's see our next scenario. So our, our catalog's up and running, inventory's all, all good. Business and is good. Business is good. We're, yes. Pearly tires are flying off the shelves, especially the bike ones. I mean, yeah. <laughs> For good reason. So uh, uh, now we need to scale this thing out, right? Uh, so we're gonna do that with uh, some advanced load balancing by Avi Networks. So let's, let's click over and see what that, that solution looks like. So the scenario we're gonna walk through is basically we have these users wanting to access the application. So the application, of course, is gonna start growing. Um, but we don't want to start racking and stacking new physical load balancers. So now we can bring in Avi, and they'll start provisioning what we call the service engines. And they'll start provisioning, they'll automatically start growing these new service engines as the application starts growing on-premise. But at some point, we're going to run out of space on-prem. So this is cool. So, so Avi not only scales the servers, it scales itself. The load balancers can scale as well as the servers, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we don't stop there, right? I mean, we've connected into public cloud. So as soon as we ran out of those resources, we can actually start scaling out to um, public cloud as well, all within that same controller and that same central management point. So the obvious control, obvious, the service engines will start spinning up in the public cloud, and you're kind of your classic cloud bursting use case. So let's hop over to the user interface to see what this actually looks like in action. So before I start, I mean, this demo may have been really boring because like all this automation already actually just happened, right? It just happened as you were, the application was scaling. So I'm gonna, show, boring, a few, but, you know, yeah. I'm gonna show a few click, click, clicks through this UI because some of the advanced analytics that Amit was talking about beforehand is, is really powerful. So here's my application dashboard. And I have all of my infrastructure actually already, already up and running. Let's go ahead and click in on our, our, our app one, which is our on-prem location. Uh, we can <coughs> see the pool of, low, of, of servers that we're load balancing to, as well as the service engine that we just talked about. And then we can click in into the Tom's Tires app in AWS as well, and we can see that we have that set up and ready to go. But we see that that, that on-prem app is yellow. So let's go click in and see what that means. So we, we can click in here and see some of the health uh, scoring, but let's, let's drill into the view, view the health. So from here, we actually saw um, we had some pool performance issues because we hadn't scaled this app out already. Right, again, this would happen generally automatically, but for the sake of the demo, we wanted to show really how easy it is to scale out too. So let's click on the ser virtual service and uh, click on the scale out button. So it's in a few seconds that we'll start scaling out our service. So let's go back into that uh, Tom's Tire app one on the uh, flow. Great, so look, well, now we've actually started scaling out the application. You notice there's two service engines now and, we're and that's growing as we're adding new applications into the mix. So we're still yellow, let's go see what else, what else may be the problem. No, okay, there we go. So here is that similar view that we saw Amit present, but let's, let's go hover over the, on, the, on the far right here. So this is actually really great visibility. This is a mean time to innocence, right? Yes. There, was a, there was a performance issue, but we can now quickly see that most of the performance issue is due because of the application response times and not the network. Any of those mean time to innocence things at home? So absolutely. <laughs> 
So uh, we can see now we, we triggered an alarm. So let's click on our alarm. And this alarm actually showed that we maxed out our on-prem resources. So when this alarm was triggered, it actually triggered an automatic uh, re rebalance uh, over to traffic to the AWS instance. So let's go actually see what that looked like. So click on the global server load balancing service. And from here, we can edit it to see what changes it made in real time. So here, we're actually seeing uh, the Tom's tier one app with one ratio, ratio of one, and the AWS of four. So every one page load, it's going to send one to on-prem and then four to the public cloud. So if we exit out of this, let's go actually back to our analytic view, but this time within AWS. So here, as we drill in, we can actually quickly see that all our traffic has started to ramp up uh, into our AWS instance as well. So with that, I mean, that's, that's our VCN. It's end-to-end. -end. The one-click experience in action. Jacob, thank you very much for that terrific demo. Thank thanks you. For, and thanks for coming. OK, so what have we talked about today? We talked about the, the necessity to have a complete solution, something that works from layer two to layer seven that has all the major functions of the data center to give you that public cloud experience on-prem. And I feel more confident than ever saying we'd be able to deliver that with NSX. We talked about the maturity of software, scale-out software that has the functionality necessary to replace those dedicated bespoke pieces of hardware and fundamentally change how we think about how we manage and provision the data center. And lastly, we talked, and hopefully you saw, the power of advanced analytics that make this stuff super easy to use. So it's a very powerful combination of things. But before I leave you, I want to just share one more thing. Deep in the labs of NSX, we are working on a new product, a product that I think could be transformative. And so we talked about the power of general purpose computing and distributed software to replace existing network functions. But when we have the freedom of software, we don't just replace them, we can rethink them, fundamentally rethink them. And this is what I'm trying to do. And so we have a team of engineers that have been working for years on a new product that can fundamentally change the way the customer consumes, deploys, and thinks about enterprise network infrastructure, a radical departure. So we're still in development here, but we can't do this alone. So we need some help. We're looking for a small number of customers that are willing to lean forward and imagine what's possible and work with us as design partners. If you think you're one of them, please come talk to us at the booth. And thank you very much for your time. Now, I do have a couple of housekeeping items. So if we go to the next slide. There's um, uh, a set of headphones that we're going to be giving away. So if you look under your seat, there's a, someone has a Willy Wonka golden ticket under their seat. There it is. So if someone's got the, the ticket, that's a free set of headphones. Calvin will give them away. We've got some links with some additional reference information. There's hands-on labs. We can see these products in action. Thank you very much for your time, and have a great rest of the show.